Hello, drone friends. This is Alan at UAV Coach and Drone Pilot Ground School. Happy Friday morning. Welcome to our Drone Weekly News Roundup. Before I share this week's drone stories, I want to acknowledge a fun milestone. This week, we are celebrating one year of the FAA's Trust Program for Recreational Drone Flyers. As a reminder, if you're flying a drone purely for uh, recreational purposes here in the United States, you need to get what's called your Trust Certificate. And that involves a free online training. It takes about 20 minutes to complete, very straightforward. Uh, This is a program that the FAA launched with a handful of approved test administrators uh, like us. And over the past year, there have been about 275,000 people that have gotten their trust certificate. We are proud to be one of the top test administrators and have had more than 60,000 of you go through this process with us over the past year. It's been amazing and so much fun to watch this industry continue to grow and to see so many people picking up these amazing pieces of technology and uh, taking to the skies for the first time. Okay, let's jump into our first story. At last, after years of waiting, Amazon has announced the launch of their first drone delivery program. Uh, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, first announced drone deliveries in 2013. I think I remember seeing a 60 Minutes clip uh, about this way back when. Uh, Anyways, fast forward to today, nine years later, they finally have a launch planned for Lockford, California. However, they're still waiting on the green light from the FAA. Amazon has had some major setbacks with their drone delivery plans. A few months ago, we reported on some of these issues like high employee turnover, crashes, and other safety risks. So with this announcement, uh, here's to hoping they've worked out those kinks and are feeling more confident uh, with the program. Since Amazon has come out with the news, uh, citizens in the area have begun to speak out. Lockford is a small, unincorporated community located about 100 miles east of San Francisco. Uh, Their main concerns are privacy and noise. We'll keep you posted as this story unfolds. Next up, Asalon, an automated security company that uses air and ground robotics. They have secured not one, not two, but three beyond visual line of sight waivers for their drone in a box system and service. As a reminder here in the US, when we're flying drones, we need to keep them within visual line of sight. It's true for hobbyists and also for drone pilots under the commercial part 107 rules. And historically, uh, while the mechanism to apply for a waiver that lets you fly beyond visual line of sight has been in place uh, for some time, the FAA has been evaluating these requests on a case-by-case basis, and needless to say, this is a quite challenging waiver uh, to obtain. Asalon initially partnered with the FAA uh, back in 2020 through the Beyond program when they deployed their uh, drone sentry uh, automated system at Memphis International Airport for FedEx uh, Express. These three waivers will allow them to use their drones at four sites around the U.S. And one of the waivers grants not just beyond visual line of sight, but also permission to fly over people, to fly at night, and to fly over moving vehicles. Uh, Kudos to Asalon on this achievement. Their systems are being used to stop crime and to detect potential issues like theft, fire, or uh, active shooters while providing real-time intelligence to security teams. Uh, Pretty cool. Lastly, did you know that it's hard to get an accurate measurement for the height of an ocean wave? Uh, And for all you surfer bros and surfer chicks out there, wave height matters for judging surfing competitions. And, you know, personal milestones and bragging rights with your homies. Uh, A new startup called Hennet Wave aims to solve this problem with drones. The company's two founders are both surfers. They have found a way to create accurate measurements of waves using a proprietary wave height algorithm and a drone. The drone acts as what Hennet calls an aerial buoy. Uh, The ultimate goal is to deploy a group of drones to produce a 3D representation of a wave tapering from the peak. Hennet's wave height algorithm determines water elevation, wave trough locations, wave peak locations, and actual wave heights through uh, drone photos. We love seeing new ways drones are being used, and although we often see cool drone footage of surfers catching uh, gnarly waves, this is a fun reminder that they can also be used for gathering helpful information and, of course, accurate bragging rights. All right, folks, that's all we have for this week. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest drone news. Remember to check out the links in the description uh, below to read more. Thanks for watching, and as always, to all of you drone pilots out there, blue skies and safe flying.